Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jenny. So Jenny's a hard act to follow. Um, first, got to find the ticket thing. Okay, here we go. Hello, thanks for coming. Thanks, Jenny. Um, we're going to talk today about editing that empowers. Okay, so I said uh, how editing raises the bar and helps writers to grow. Big title. Bear with me. Um, I'm going to start with a quote from Ernest Hemingway. This is fiction. It's not UX writing. It's not marketing writing. Um, but the only kind of writing is rewriting. Very famous quote. Um, Ernest Hemingway was known for his precision prose and, you know, books like The Old Man and the Sea. Um, and you know, it's, it's kind of like it's a universal thing of, of all writers that very rarely get it right on the first version. If you do, you're pretty lucky. Like nine times out of ten, you're going to have to rewrite it. And that's this kind of like the secret... Uh, pain, if you want to call it, of all writers everywhere, <laughs> is that we basically have to rewrite everything we write. Um, and that's where editing comes in. So who am I? Um, uh, I I'm the edited version. Okay, 18 years I've been writing professionally. I uh, started in journalism, uh, 12 years in high tech, uh, five years as a UX writer here at Wix, um, which I, I love, and uh, three, I've written three Lonely Planet guidebooks, which I co-authored, um, lots of other articles. I've got three kids, they're all girls. Two passports, which is British and Israeli, you can tell by the accent. Sorry about the accent, by the way, but just bear with me. Um, and I did all this within 31 years. So, uh, what will we cover today? <laughs> uh, so, we're going to cover what is editing, why do we edit, um, uh, which is a, a, a real question actually that people have, like why do we even edit? Um, different types of editing, the Wix way of editing, and uh, the de desired outcome of editing. Like, what, what's the point? What are we do doing it for? Um, I'll just say like a caveat, like even if you're not an editor, um, which some of you may be just writers and, or um, like you don't have an editor, I think it's still kind of relevant if you self-edit. Everybody self-edits. Um, and also it's not just about UX writing. I think kind of editing, the principles of editing kind of apply to marketing writing, to technical writing, to blog writing. I just want to start, but first, before we go into everything, let's go back in time with the history of editing or the evolution of editing. So, editing is not a new thing. Like, UX writing is a new thing, but editing is not. We've been doing it since the Bible, you know, the Bible written by God, edited by Moses, um, you know, allegedly, you know, the Bhagavad Gita. We've been, we've been, these, these were all books uh, that were edited by scholars, right? Um, and then, like, Fast forward into the 17th century, we get the first printed newspapers. I was surprised to find out in my Google research, which may not be true, that, uh, that the first newspaper was printed in the Netherlands. I also thought it was the UK. Uh, and then, then we get to like, the 20th century, obviously it becomes like a profession, right? Editing. Um, some of you uh, may have learned this. I, I, when I first started as a, as a writer, I actually had to learn the proofreading marks. You know, it's like capitalization is three lines. Um, people still use that today. Like you'd print things out, and do it. um, it's very hard to do online. But that's kind of that's kind of uh, uh, the proofreading um, symbols. And I found a quote from like 1923: um, "The good copy reader must be able to catch instantly and correct quickly errors of all kinds. He or she must be able to detect and correct errors of fact, and should be able to pass intelligent intelligent judgment." So, like, you know, that's kind of relevant to what we do. We're still looking for errors, different kind of errors. Like at Wix, we have a, we have a whole talk about that. But, you know, there's a, 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 the thing is that editing is, is not a new thing. We've been doing it since the 1920s in this kind of way. And now we get to, like, to today. So, like, where Donald Trump is writing, looks to me like Bernie people will fight. If not, their blood, sweat, and tears was a total waste of time. Uh, you kind of wish there were editors. We've got so much user-generated content nowadays. Uh, nowadays, that um, you kind of wish there were editors and fact checkers. It's an important, important point. Um, some people generally, um, jokes aside, some people generally ask, like, why do we need to edit today? You know, can't a writer just write it and just get it out there? There's so much user-generated content because things like uh, spelling, fact checking, fact checking, user voice, everything that Jenny talked about, um, they can't. They're very hard to do uh, on the first version. What is editing? Quick question for you guys. I've got like a minute. Who wants to answer? Anyone want to say, have a have a have a go at it? Nobody. Ah, come. Making making sure a piece of text is correct by like the general standards. Yeah. Anyone else? Ah, I, go, I can't hear you back there. So hang on, the microphone's coming. Oh, okay. Uh, hi. 
I think uh, editing is uh, very subjective because every person has his own perspective on how words and texts and ideas should be shown. Uh, and it's also, I, th I don't know where I read it, but like editing is endless because everyone is different, so everyone will edit, keep editing it differently. A never-ending story. Yep. Right, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, we've got a guy here as well, one more answer here. Uh, yeah, boy, here's the mic. The, the mic. <laughs> uh, it, making sure the text meets its purpose. You, you write something, maybe you divest or something like that, you have to make sure that it has a start, middle, and ending, and it does what it needs to do in its place. Great, great. So we've got like you know, a few answers there, making sure that it, it meets its purpose, that it's subjective. Um, and uh, yeah, like no, no one said cutting, you know, like a lot of people just say, oh, it's just cutting text. Uh, I had an editor, my old, he used to say he's going to get his butcher's knife out and just cut my text apart. Um, uh, this is what uh, the Oxford English Dictionary say, to prepare a piece of writing to be published by correcting the mistakes, making improvements to it, etc. Um, Merriam-Webster, which I kind of prefer, is, is like to alter, adapt, or refine, especially to bring about conformity to a standard or to suit a particular purpose. That's how they, they uh, talk about editing. And you notice there that the word cut is not there. It's about like refining, adapting, altering, um, preparing. Um, and ed today, so like UX writing, I feel it's like editing is for users. So here's a famous example from, from Dropbox. Um, like click on the left, you've got the, the pre-edited version before. So in like a long form, are you sure you want to delete this shared folder? Yes, delete file folder, and you've got all of what will happen. Um, we often see screens like this. Uh, and then like the UX writer and the editor have come along and, and it's taken probably a few versions to get to remove shared folder from your Dropbox. This will remove medium articles from your Dropbox. Other members will still have access. They've said all of that in like two lines and then remove. Um, so um, I think this is like a very uh, basic example, but like um, UX writing and editing is obviously simplifying complex messages. Uh, you'd be amazed some of the original screens we see, and then you know, like all of the, and then some of the end screens. They're so often worlds apart. Um, editing is more than words. Um, also, like uh, sometimes it's changing the layout, uh, the, the design. Um, sometimes it's changing the product, like, but I won't, I won't go there yet. But like, uh, yeah, it's, it's like changing the design. So here's an example of, of like we had bullet points there on the left-hand side um, uh, for, for, a, for, for the contacts in Wix, um, delete 10 contacts. And, and then after editing session with the writer, we were kind of trying to rewrite these bullet points. We're like, and we just realized, let's just scrap the bullet points. It's too much. It's taking too much attention from the main thing. It's like, it may happen. So we made it into a note. You could argue it should even be a smaller font, but we, you know, we minimized it. So like, it's kind of changing the layout rather than just changing text. And sometimes you add bullet points, sometimes you take away bullet points, sometimes you add titles. Um, so it's more than just like the words on the screen. Um, and it's not just cutting. As I said, this is an important point. A lot of people think, uh, I also used to think this, that editing is like cutting. Um, here's an example of a product that, um, that I, my team works on is automations. Um, and we had here on the original version, like get automation link on the left hand side. Um, this is a very dev orientated product, so don't worry. Um, and then, like after editing it, we realized that's like that's like the first step. How can I paste the link? How can I how can I paste the link if I don't already have an automation? So we realized through editing, and we actually added a whole section and added two lines of copy and added a longer CTA. So like it's not always less is more. Sometimes you know more is more. Um, it's not just top down. Uh, I always think of like the Superman. What's that? What's it called? The Daily Planet. Like the editor who's like shouting at uh, 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 Clark, Clark Kent. Like it's, uh, it's, not, it's not just top down um, where the editor fixes the writer's text uh, at Wix, and I guess with you guys as well. It's more today like a collaboration. Like, you know, we, we, can, give, we can edit copy, but the writer can also say, like, no, I don't agree with that. And then it becomes a conversation, a collaboration. Um, it ain't Grammarly. Uh, you know, it's more than just the improving the English, the typos, the grammar. Uh, we are actually talking about the product and the tone and the uh, and even the methodology in editing. You can also like, how did you write get to this? Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, and when you edit UX, uh, you're not just editing the text. As I said, you're, you're editing the product, like because you're going through the flow, kind of like almost like the first user, like 
uh, this doesn't make sense. Maybe you need to change that screen completely. And that is when you get into product areas. Um, I just want to say, like, I, although I said typos, we're not doing grammar, typos do, do kind of matter. <laughs> and it is a part of editing. And we've had like, some funny typos. Uh, like uh, on the automations product, um, you start an automation with a trigger. And uh, it nearly went to, it nearly went out. It was like set up this tigger. And so although, although we like Winnie the Pooh, we were kind of like, oh, we can't let that one go. Um, so why do we edit? Um, why does Wix edit? So like, as Jenny said, we've got over 60 plus uh, UX writers. So one of the reasons is to, is to keep the, the, the voice, tone, and style. Um, another really important point is that we've got over 200 million users, not all of them using all these products, but in, in total, million, potentially millions of people could see your product. If you had a newspaper or a magazine that went out to 200 million readers, it'd be kind of weird if you didn't edit it first. And it would at least go through two or three people. So um, I know that there are lots of content writers who just write and no one edits. Um, but at Wix, we kind of realized we're so, so many users in so many different uh, countries, we have to edit before we, before we go out. Um, it raises the bar and improves the content and the overall product flow. Um, but the editing process is more than that. It's also about the text, but it's also about the writers. Like it helps them improve and grow. Um, it teaches and supports them with feedback. It's like basically weekly feedback, you know. And you, you, you can only get better with feedback. Um, and it gives writers the tools to become independent. So eventually, the writer can sort of self-edit. Um, and then just like uh, everybody needs a second pair of eyes. No matter, you know, even if you've been writing for 18 years, like I have, you still want. Can you just look at this, please? Um, and someone to bounce ideas off of. Otherwise, you're writing in a, you know, like a tunnel. Who can edit? Um, you kind of need to develop an eye for editing. I, I was told when I was a journalist <laughs> by my boss, before you can edit, you first need to write. And a lot, like you basically, it's kind of like a rule that you can only be an editor after you've suffered. Right? You have to write and be edited and be edited. And then you, then you realize from your own editing se own sessions that, 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 that um, the way that you should edit. Um, a good ed a good, I always find that a good editor catches things that others don't. You know, so typos, wrong tone, weird layout. Uh, it happens a lot that it could be, it could have passed through 10, 10 iterations, 10 versions. And then you kind of like have to be the unpopular guy who goes, ah, uh, like, that doesn't make sense, and why? And kind of, you could be the last. Uh, you're the, like the last guardian before it goes out. Um, and this only comes with time and practice, finding things that other people don't see. Um, types of editing. Okay, so at Wix we have a few different types of editing. Uh, we have one to one with a mentor. We have a new thing, a mentorship program, and team leaders. Um, this is the most common form of editing, and I think it's the best because um, with one to one. Uh, you can really, really tear a piece of text apart, and you, like you can work a piece of text, work a piece of text. So um, you know, it's like it can be a long process. It can be you sit down for like, oh, we're gonna have a half an hour meeting, and it ends up being an hour and a half, because uh, you know, like every line can be questioned, uh, words can be looked at from different angles. You start finding, as like I said, you find the product needs a bit of re revision, um, and this is a good way to get a deep, deep dive. It, um, that's why one-to-one -one editing is probably. Uh, very good. Uh, one one peer editing is is um, also common at Wix. Like uh, like Jenny said, we've got a Slack channel, and writers can just. This is great. Like you know, in the old days, you just grab someone in the corridor. Like, hey, what do you think of this? It's kind of like that on Slack as well. Like, what do you think of this? You haven't got time to have a meeting. You've got to do something. Um, and this is uh, UX writers. The you know the 60 plus UX writers can can get really good feedback from different writers, and we can do this face to face or on Slack, as I said. Um, We've got group show and tells. These are also beneficial, but in a different way. You probably can't go as deep in a group. We have um, at Wix, we have a big guild, and we have cross guild um, uh, editing groups. So everyone will show, like, you know, it's like, kind of like a show and tell. I'm going to show you five screens that I'm working on. You probably can't go as deep as you can with your team leader or you know your mentor, but you get some genuinely good feedback from other writers in a, in a big in a big uh, in a bigger um, fo forum. Um, guild reviews. So this is an even higher, higher level um, kind of editing where we have uh, management reviews, and we'll, and the writer will normally, normally at the end of the process, normally after Figma, normally when it's in dev or nearly about to come out, or even if it's after, after it's come out, um, where the u writer will talk about the competitor research, the user voice examples. We talked about this in the last meetup. You know, the three ways of um, of, of uh, researching um, KPIs, data, and they run through the product live or on Figma. And we also have like management, uh, nothing, nothing, not even connected to the Writers Guild. Uh, we have product, um, 
product reviews and roadmap sessions where the very like the managers will look look at a uh, product and often uh, content comes up as like a as a key as a key part of a product review um, so the wix way of editing um, the wix way of editing like uh, yeah, this is not official this is just kind of like we've just kind of made this up <laughs> for this but it's it's uh, I can't, we've, we've 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 kind of got to a, a wix it's, it's not you know it's not in documented in it we don't have to do it this way but this is kind of the natural way that wix does it and i think it's quite unique to wix and, um, so we discuss and bounce ideas like editing, as I said, is a two-way conversation. Uh, and editing suggests uh, uh, an edit, but the writer can always, you know, um, um, cont contest it. And it's a back and forth, um, a ping pong. Hence, why well, we've got the picture of some ping pong balls. Um, we use leading questions. Uh, ask, don't tell. This is a very hard bit for an editor. Like sometimes you see a piece of text, and you're like, I know it should be written this way, and you just kind of you want to just tell like tell them to write it that way but um it's much much more beneficial in the long run if you just ask questions and the right let the writer kind of realize it themselves um sometimes like the smartest thing you can do is not to be smart I, i'm very good at asking dumb questions so like you just sort of ask questions in the editing session things like this things that you can ask yourselves like how did the user get to this screen um, where does it go after? Um, does it align with the goal? What's the benefit for the user? Can we have some dynamic content here? Maybe we can switch that sentence around. And the classic, could you write this shorter? Right. Um, another key kind of um, uh, tactic in editing is not to look at the screen. I uh, learned this at Wix. Sometimes you can get, um, uh, what's the word? You can kind of be influenced by the dummy copy or the placeholder copy or the first version copy. And just like, I've had it in writing, editing sessions where I just said to the writer, like, what, what are you trying to say? Look me in the eye, let's not look at the screen. What are you trying to say? We had a product called Team Management. And he said, uh, oh, this is where I just, want to, I just want to invite people to work on my site. So you didn't use any of those words. <laughs> let's put them in there. So sometimes it works. Um, if you're a bit stuck, um, Try and you can do it by yourself as well. Like try not to look at the screen and just think, what would you say? How would you explain this to a friend? This is also like what um, goes to what um, Jenny said with the say it, write it. This is literally say it, write it, and it helps you bring out different words. Um, remember the style guide. So obviously, as an editor, you have to also remember the style guide. If something is way off the style or way off the capitalization, standardization, um, uh, we have to keep consistency. I won't go into that too much. Terminology, we could do a whole session on terminology, but like you know, that's a really important, really important point. Um, and uh, so I think with editing or writing, even you have to arrive at a version. So um, you know, it's a good idea to duplicate the screen and try a different approach. Um, I think if a writer is doing uh, uh, one version. Um, that's not enough. Like you kind of haven't almost haven't done your job properly. Like you kind of have to do at least two or three versions, especially in UX. Um, maybe you don't want to do that with like a, a, a fifteen thousand word blog post. But you know, but with, with UX, you have to do a few different versions, um, and it shows you what the writer is thinking. So when you're editing, um, you can kind of often we see ah like we take a bit of version three and a bit of version four, but like um, we'll take most of version one though. Like that's kind of and it's kind of a thought process that you have to go through. Um, it's the fun part. It's the fun part of writing, I find, the versions. Although, it, um, how many versions? So this is a really key point. I like, you know, there's no hard and fast rule, but I think one version is not enough. Um, if you're doing like nine versions, ten versions, probably too much. You're probably getting a bit lost. You're lost, lost in the woods, or you know. Um, so like something like three to five versions, and it's just, it's just even just a small thing here, like the welcome back, log into it, just a small thing, but like this, this slightly different. Welcome back, welcome back to Wix. It just shows you, and you might, you can you kind of visually see, ah, maybe the middle one is the best one. I don't know. We're still working on this. Um, Nonverbal versus verbal. Uh, some key differences. So like you know, nonverbal editing, um, which is basically done in comments uh, norm normally. Um, so we've talked a lot about verbal editing. Uh, but non-verbal editing is, is when you don't have time for a meeting or um, you want to do it in context. It's got some benefits and some and some uh, some pros and cons. So editing comments to Figma or Docs can be a great way to give in-context feedback. It's right there on the page where you want it. Um, but you have to ask yourself, who else is seeing this comment when you're editing? Um, is Maybe it's like the whole team is seeing it. Maybe this is something you need to say. Maybe this is a bigger point. Um, um, comments can be misunderstood and missed. 
Um, the last thing your writer wants to see is 30 noti like notifications, 30 comments added by so-and-so. That's the last thing you want to see. And you may miss them that way as well. So you have to be careful with comments, not to leave too many. Um, um, and I think in comments also to be be positive and suggestive. Obviously, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but comments can also be a great tool. Here's a, a like a comment on a on a Google Doc um, that we just. Uh, it can also be a way of sort of introducing um, an uh, an idea, like visually an idea. Obviously, right. So the writer here, Jamie, um, has written like uh, a new empty state for the inbox where it can introduce the channels. Um, and I, I back her up by saying this is a great idea, it shows the benefit, and then the UX designer has said, yeah, okay, let's do it. And without the comments, we wouldn't be able to get to this, this, uh, this, this way. Um, we weren't in the office that day. Well, you know, if you could do it, you could do it verbally, but in, in with comments, it's, um, it's great to visually illustrate a point. Now, there's different ways of commenting. There's constructive, non-constructive, right? So uh, we all do this the easy way to say, like, you know, on the left-hand side, repetitive, or you could say, you know, using this word four times, maybe you could try a different word, um, this UX sucks, like, you know, the hierarchy seems off, I suggest you mark up a different approach, maybe can you try something else, remove this, uh, you know, I'm not sure we need this part, can we try a different version? Um, it's very easy to slip into kind of uh, non-constructive comments, but um, it, it can, it can, we're all sensitive as writers, so. <laughs> uh, um, the desired outcome, okay, uh, encourage and empower. So I think um, like when you're editing, you, it's very important to give positive feedback. Um, you, you, you can edit, sometimes when you do an editing session, uh, you may give a lot of uh, comments and it may come across as negative because you're trying to fix stuff that is like kind of broken. Um, sometimes you, you may love the entire thing, like the whole flow is great, but the writer will only remember like the three things that you, you didn't like. So always remember to put in the positive, like I love that idea, um, I, I love that line, this is really good. Um, it, uh, it helps writers, I think, uh, uh, grow. and. Uh, give ownership. I think the own, the ultimate goal of an editor, like, well, like I said at the beginning, we don't want to edit. We like we want the writer to edit themselves. We have this internal voice that they can edit themselves. Um, so I think that's that's the main goal of us is of, of editors that we want them to to own it. And at Wix, we kind of say, like I said, in the editing sessions, like you know, this is what I say. This is what I think you should do. Or like, let's talk about it. We have a ping pong. Um, uh, maybe you could try it this way. We ask, we ask the questions. Um, but at the end of the day, like at the end, you own it. It's your, you, you take it. It's your, you're the UX expert. You're, you know more than me. You're like, you're, you're working day in day out with the product manager. Um, so uh, you, you make the final decision. And this is, um, this also comes down to what Jenny said with the Babel, with the final, final edit after Figma. We've also got um, uh, Babel is the content management system. Is the, 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 the writer can literally co um, edit the live, live text. Um, and after, after, a while, after a while, writers own their products and can edit themselves and others. I've seen like writers who become so good at editing themselves, they like, oh, you can also edit other people, right? Um, in a nutshell, okay, uh, which hints the squirrel, and um, editing is you know, like, you know, in a nutshell, encouraging and empowering writers um, to, you know, bring them up. Um, you know, obviously we've got to fix typos, we've got to fix uh, things, but I think there's also is a great positive thing in editing that it's a positive process. We're making the product better. Um, uh, discuss, ask leading questions. Um, you know, like all the questions we talked about, um, it's better to discuss it th than, than just, um, just dic dic dictate. Um, invest time, do versions. I really, really think that versions are the hard work of a writer. This is the rewriting. Um, that we were talking about at the beginning. And uh, at the end, we just touched on this, teach writers to edit themselves. Um, so that, I think that's kind of, kind of the basics of it. There's a lot more to editing. Uh, I want to end with a, uh, a quote, another quote from a fiction writer, Zadie Smith. The secret to editing your work is simple. You need to become its reader instead of its writer. Um, you know, take the word reader and, and put the word user. You know, it's kind of exactly what the secret to editing your work is simple. You need to become its user instead of its writer. Sounds really easy. Like, but if you've been working on something, like we work on sometimes for six months, like you've been working on a product for six months, you've seen it, <laughs> like this is like the tenth time you've seen it, it's very hard to put yourself in the shoes of someone in Delaware who's seen it for the first time. And now at Wix we have different uh, types of users. We have very hard to put yourself, we have dev developers, we have like a dev center. It's very hard to put yourselves in the shoes of the developer or in the shoes of a DIY user or an agency or a business or an enterprise. So um, it's, that's the hard bit, is, um, is trying, to be, trying to be the user. Um, and I think that goes to the next, the next, the next thing we're gonna talk about is different types of audiences, so Sarah's gonna do it later. 
I think there's a break, right? Yes, we're going to take a 10-minute break now. Uh, but it, before that, if anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask Dan. No, you'll see. About editing. Hi, thank you for, uh, for your presentation. So my question was, through the whole presentation, is how do you get into that mindset of becoming the person who is seeing it for the first time, um, as opposed to someone who's been in the bits and bytes working on it for six months? How do you make that switch? Well, you know, if I knew the answer to that, I'd, you know, like, it's kind of, uh, I always think of uh, my mum. <laughs> like, I mean, what, how would my mum kind of, and then I can kind of uh, like get get into it. Let's say if it's a, it depends what kind of, you know, if you're writing for a developer, then you have to actually might have to ask a real developer, like, do you understand this? Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's very hard to do. You kind of make a switch. Uh, sometimes you need a bit of space from it. Like, if you've been looking at something too long, like I said, don't look at the screen. You might need a day or like, just like, I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to work on something else and come back to it. Um, that's, by the way, relevant for all kinds of writing. I found that in everything, not just UX writing, like it's a bit of space and then you come back the next day and I was talking earlier to Sarah, like sometimes you, in the old, olden days, you used to print, you used to print words and like you, you could look at something three times on your screen and then you print it and then you find something like, oh wow, I would never have got that unless I printed it out. So um, we can't print stuff all the time, we don't print Figma files, but being, being these, I, I, I think everyone has their own way of doing it and I, I just think of my mum. <laughs> 